Well, hey, this is Rich Wilkerson, and I'm so glad that you are joining us today. Whether you're listening to this or watching this, we're really glad that you are here. Like it, subscribe to it, share it. It helps us tremendously around here. Hey, uh, it's always my prayer, and it's always my hope that we would help equip you in your life, in your faith, in your leadership. And uh, I'm hoping that's going to happen today. I, I want to talk for a little bit, if I can, today from this thought, the truth in the transition. The truth in the transition. I I've learned that in transitions, things can start to get blurry. In transitions, things can feel a little bit chaotic. It's very important that when we are in a transition, whether that's a leadership transition, a relationship transition, a job transition, that we understand what the truth is in the midst of it. You know, when I think about life, life really is all about transitions. A transition is defined as a process or a period of changing from one state or a condition to another. The process of a state or a stage changing. So there's change in transition. Think about your life. Is life not full of them? Childhood to adolescence? Sheesh, I'm grateful I'm not in puberty anymore. Those were some tough times out there. But think about um, adolescence into adulthood. Man, joining the workforce, that was, that was an interesting time. Um, think about going from single to being married, going from marriedhood to parenthood. Uh, that's all up in the adulthood, okay? Like all these things are different. Midlife crisis, I'm, I'm 40 years of age or I'm turning 40. Man, that's, that's some midlife time right there where people oftentimes, because they don't have truth in the midst of it, in that transition, they can eject, they can quit, they can leave the marriage, quit the job, all because of feelings and chaos. Uh, we have a big building project going on right now where we're in a massive renovation at one of our locations. And yo, when you walk into that place, it is full of chaos. There's clutter everywhere. There's debris everywhere. It's messy to say the least. It's so messy that we actually put up signs so that when people come on Sundays, the sign says, pardon the mess, we are under construction. The whole idea of the sign is that when people see it, they don't freak out and leave. They go, oh, okay, wait, we can give some grace here. Of course, this is a construction site. We should expect things to be messy. Well, so it is with your life. Your life is always under construction. There's going to be some messy areas. There's going to be some chaos in some categories. It's okay. God's building you. God's forming you. The Word of God says, be confident of this, that he who began a good work in you, the one who started the building project, come on, he's faithful. He will complete it. There's an old story of the great artist Michelangelo as he was chipping away at this shapeless piece of rock. Someone came and said, what are you doing? And Michelangelo responded, I am liberating an angel from the rock. See, nobody else could see the masterpiece that Michelangelo could see. He had to keep chipping away at it. See, he had a plan. He had blueprints. So it is with your life. God is a great architect. He's got a plan for your life. He's got blueprints for your life. Trust him in the process. What can happen to us, though, is that in process, in transition, we can look around at the mess we can look around at the chipping of the way and we can say, yo, this doesn't feel right. Let me quit. Let me turn around. I'm not doing this anymore. But I want to encourage you from God's word. Uh, there's, a, there's a fascinating story. It's the story of Joshua. So many stories we could teach from Joshua. But I just want to begin at the, at the starting point of his leadership. Because in Joshua chapter 1, we catch him in transition. We catch him from becoming, well, he's going from being Moses' aide. He goes from Moses' aide to being the leader of the army of the Lord. But in Joshua chapter 1, he's now going to fill the shoes of Moses. Moses has died, and now Joshua is going to be the successor of Moses. This is a big deal. This is a huge transition. How is he going to get this right? He doesn't have all the answers. He doesn't have a perfect blueprint or even a plan in front of him. All he gets in this transition moment is a promise from God. You see, when we're in transitions, the truth is we still 
have a promise. Even when you feel like you don't have the plans, you still have a promise. This entire book, well, it's promises from God. You got to get this book into your heart. You got to hide it in your heart so that when you're in transition, man, you don't go to the left or the right. You hang on to the truth. Let's look at it. This is a simple study. Joshua chapter 1. Let's start at verse 5. God says to Joshua, No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Promise number one, truth number one when you're in transition. First truth is, is that you always have God's presence. God doesn't leave us. God doesn't run away from us. The psalmist said, hey, if I make my bed in the heavens or in the depths of hell, you are still there, O Lord. God is omnipresent. He's everywhere, all the time, all at once. You know what our problem is? Our problem is, is that we're not aware of his presence. So many times we feel all alone. It's through prayer. It's through worship that all of a sudden God's manifest presence becomes known to us. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. I would encourage you, man, if you're in transition, turn the worship music up louder. If you're in transition, get the Bible out. You need to get God's word into you because it's going to make you aware of the presence of God. The other night, um, I'm in this transition, if you will, or this stage, this current state. I'm, I'm ready to transition out of it where all my kids somehow end up in our bed every night. we got three kids, Wyatt, Wild, and Waylon. All three of these kids somehow keep ending up in our bed. I haven't given them permission for this. It just happens. Well, the other night, uh, all the kids ended up in the bed, and we woke up the next day, and we were hanging out at breakfast, and my second-born son, Wild, he says to his mother, he said, Mom, I thought you were going to sleep with me. To which my wife responded, Wild, I did sleep with you. To which Wild responded, Well, Mom, I didn't feel you. And my wife responded, Well, I was there all night and so were you. And it made me laugh because how many times is this what we say to God? God, I thought you promised me like Joshua that you were going to be with me. And God's like, I was with you. We say, but I didn't feel you. God responds, well, it doesn't make it any less true. I was with you all throughout the night. I carried you every step of the way. Like Joshua, the truth in transition is, is God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Whether you feel it, sense it, or not, it's just true. Find some comfort in that today, that you're not alone, that he's walking with you. Watch this. Let's pick up this second promise. This is Joshua chapter 1. We're going to start at verse 6. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. The second truth in transition is that God promises you guidance. He doesn't just promise his presence. He promises guidance. He says, yo, Joshua, check this out. Be strong and courageous uh, because I'm going to be with you. But also, you know that book? that Moses passed on to you, my law. Remember that whole thing that I gave in Exodus where I was very detailed and I described everything about my tabernacle, all the ways that I want you to worship me, all the ways that I want you to make sure that you uh, look out for people, the boundaries, the standards that you give to people, my law. Remember that thing? Make sure you get that thing and you read it day and night, man. Keep it on your mind. Keep it on your lips. Don't go one inch to the right. Don't go one inch to the left. You're looking for guidance right now. You're looking for a plan. Here's the plan. Obey my word. Obey what I have commanded. Why? 
Well, the psalmist says that this book, the Bible, is a light unto our path. It's a lamp unto our feet, meaning this book will direct you. In transition, it's so easy to feel like we're in darkness. I don't know what to do next. Everything's changing. Everything's becoming something. And I just see the mess. I just see the chaos. Is there any design in the debris? Is there any clarity in all of this confusion? And if we're not careful, we can look to the left, we can look to the right, all the while forgetting about God's word. God has given you plans. God has given you a blueprint. It's called his word. I think when we're in chaos, we all want a fresh word. We all want revelation. Yo, before you get revelation, start with illumination. Let the word become alive. Read it. Meditate on it. It is the very thing that will direct you. If you feel confused today, well, guess what? God's got a word for that. If you're afraid today, God's got a word for that. If you're anxious today, God's got a word for that. This book is full of everyday promises that you can apply to your life. I think about my phone and all of the applications that it has. I've got so many apps on my phone that help my daily living, apps that track my sleeping, uh, apps that watch my diet, apps that help me read better, apps that help me take notes. Well, you you know what? The Bible's way better than your iPhone. The Bible's got an app for everything. For every problem, there is a promise. For every uncertainty, there is a truth. For every area of confusion, he wants to illuminate and bring clarity to your life. But you got to read it. You got to meditate on it. The truth in transition is he wants to guide you. That's what he's promising Joshua. Hey, Joshua, I'll speak to you, but I've also already said some things to you. And I shouldn't have to repeat myself over and over and over again. You know, um, I get a chance to lead uh, a staff here in Miami, and it's the great joy of my life getting to serve and work alongside so many incredible people. But man, one of the great frustrations of every leader is that leaders, well, they discover that they have to repeat themselves over and over and over again. However, the leaders that I tend to promote and the leaders that I like to work with the most are the ones that when they hear my words and when they hear my challenge, my command, my directions, my vision, that they immediately begin to apply it. They immediately put it into action. Now, on the natural self, uh, I, I know that I'm not God, but I do wonder... I have a sense that God, he operates the same way. That I have a sense in my heart that the ones that he promotes, the ones that he likes to use, are the ones that obey quickly. You know, delayed obedience, that's still disobedience. We got to be people that, man, we got the word. Let's get our lives aligned with the word. It's kind of silly to go, I feel like I don't know the will of God when you're not already obeying the written will of God. Obey his word and watch as he guides your steps. He doesn't just promise his presence. He doesn't just promise his guidance. Watch this. This is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This last portion, the truth and transition, is this, is that God will give you strength in transition. If you read the text three different times in these first nine verses, God commands Joshua to not be afraid. Now, the text never says that Joshua's afraid, but something tells me that the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God, he says this three times because he must know that Joshua is dealing with fear. Fear can come upon us in transitions. Getting married, that's scary. Having kids, that's scary. Losing a marriage, that's scary. Getting a job, that's scary. Losing a job, that's scary. Go through it. Fear can come upon us, but God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's given us one of love, power, and sound mind. He wants to give you a sound mind. And a sound mind would say this, is that just because you're afraid doesn't mean that you can't be courageous. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is the ability to face your fear.
fear. Well, I don't know how to face my fear in my own strength. That's the good news of what God is saying to Joshua. God is saying to Joshua, you don't have to face your fear in your own strength. You can face your fear in my strength. When God encourages us, he doesn't encourage us in our own abilities. He encourages us in his abilities. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. This is what God does. This is why God says, don't be discouraged, Joshua. Don't be afraid. Some of you right now, you're watching this and you're in transition and you have discouragement in your heart. Be careful with that discouragement. Discouragement always gives way to a spirit of defeat. And you're never going to mature. You're never going to grow if you have a spirit of defeat. Remember that old, I think, 1940s film, It's a Wonderful Life? If you've never seen it, go watch it. At least at Christmas time, go watch it. it. Took me 39 years, but I finally saw it. The whole movie is about this guy named George Bailey, who actually has a wonderful life. But because of some negative circumstances, because of some negative transitions, he gets to a point that he wants to end his life. And the whole movie begins with this conversation up in heaven between two angels, Franklin, the head angel, and the angel who's waiting to get his wings, Clarence. And Franklin calls upon Clarence for a big mission. He says to Clarence, he says, hey, Clarence, you got to go down to earth. There's this man on earth who really needs our help. And Clarence says, oh, no, is he sick? And then Franklin's next line is the one that sticks with me today. He says, oh, no, it's far worse than that. He's discouraged. You see, Franklin is speaking about what I'm speaking about. That, man, you could be sick in your body. You could have all sorts of stuff going on around you. But the greatest problem is the thing that's going on on the inside of you. Are you discouraged? Are you walking with a spirit of defeat? God says, you don't have to be discouraged. I'm going to be with you. I will strengthen you in the transition. For Joshua, Joshua had to face all of his fears. He's got many things coming up. He's got the walls of Jericho. He's got the battle at Ai. He's got Achan He's got the Gibeonites. He's got lots of challenges that await him before he actually occupies the promised land. But the good news for Joshua and the good news for you and me is that in the transition, we can rest on this truth. God's presence is with me. God will guide me and God will strengthen me. Proverbs chapter 16, verse nine says this, in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. The Lord blesses and establishes your steps. It doesn't say the Lord establishes your stance. A stance is a stagnant posture. It's at a standstill position. No, God says you have to step. You have to make an action. Faith is an action. We serve the motion activated God that when I step, he moves. It's like those automatic sliding doors. It's not until I step onto the pad that the sensor sees me, that the doors open up. It's like that, it's like that sink that you put your hands under. Until I put my hands under it, the water doesn't flow. So it is with God. God wants to establish your steps, but you got to take a step. You take the step and God will strengthen the step. You take the step and God will guide the step. You take the step and God says, I will be with you every step of the way. Yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I don't know if Joshua was afraid, but I know in transitions, I can be afraid. But it's in that moment that I keep on walking. I don't live in fear. I don't stop in the valley. I don't plant in the valley. I don't get married in the valley of the shadow of death. I don't build a business in the valley of the shadow of death. I walk through it. And so it is with you and so it is with me. The truth in the transition is you keep on walking. You keep on stepping and God will be with you. God doesn't always give us the plans, but he always gives us a promise. You could say it this way. The promise, that is the plan. The truth, that's the thing I'm going to hang on to because I believe in this mess, God has a blueprint. He's liberating something from this shapeless rock. What you see today, 
Well, God sees so much more. Don't quit. Don't give up. Trust him. In due process, he's going to liberate all that he sees. And the best really is yet to come.